Medical industry is no different when it comes to widespread use of the jargon. One of the commonly used term, a very important term, is state of the art. This has implications across your quality management system. But what does it mean? How do you show that your system is state of the art? If you're wondering about these questions, you're not alone. These terms can be very confusing. Hello and welcome. I'm Naveen Agarwal and I help medical companies build safe products through a quality management system that is not just compliant, but also focused on the needs of patients and doctors. So call me or email me with your questions and let me know how I can help you. This video is one out of the series of videos I have made, which talk about these commonly used terms in our industry. And my intention here is to help you navigate through the jargon that's thrown around all the time. And I've seen a lot of cases where these terms are not properly understood. And as a result, there are problems in implementation. So be sure to check these videos out on my channel uh, for a variety of different terms that are used in our industry. But in this specific video, I want to focus on the term state of the art. ISO 14971, the International Standard for Risk Management of Medical Devices, was recently updated. It's the most recent third edition of this standard, which just came out in 2019. And in that, for the first time, they defined this term state of the art. And this is a very welcome move because prior to this edition, this term was always used, but never really properly defined. And as a result, there were a lot of misinterpretations. So we'll go into this term a little bit in more detail. Let's look at the definition and a few examples and three key points that are important for this term. ISO 14971 defines state of the art as developed stage of technical capability at a given time as regards products, processes, and services based on the relevant consolidated findings of science, technology, and experience. There's an important clarification note for this definition. The state of the art embodies what is currently and generally accepted as good practice in technology and medicine. Now, next sentence is very important. The state of the art does not necessarily imply the most technologically advanced solution. The state of the art described here is sometimes referred to as generally acknowledged state of the art. So now let's look at three key points here. First, the state of the art reflects what is generally known. It is not a secret. For example, a trade secret about an advanced technological solution known to a specific company or used in an existing product is not generally known. It is interesting to understand this in the context of patent law. Terms like state of the art or prior art are used to assess the novelty of a proposed invention. So in fact, state of the art in that context actually means something obvious and already known. Second, there is an element of time and state of the art is expected to evolve over time. What is expected here is what is collectively and generally known at the current time, not what it will be in future. Some of the most advanced technology may already be available, but that is not state of the art because it is not generally known at the time. For example, electric cars are becoming more common, but gas powered combustion engine is still the state of the art for automobiles. There's a lot of new technology in electric cars, no doubt but it is still not the current state of the art. It is developing, but it is not generally known, maybe in the very near future. Finally, the codification of the state of the art happens in the form of standards, regulations, guidelines, and codes. International and national standards reflect the state of the art. Guidelines and regulations are based on the state of the art and reflect the current expectations for compliance. These are only a few examples. Scientific literature, patents, conference presentations also continually reflect emerging knowledge, but it takes time for that collection of knowledge to accumulate and be acknowledged as the state of the art. Why is this important? Well, 
ISO 14971 requires that all risks should be reduced to as far as possible. How do you show that? One way of showing that, and it's not explicitly defined in the standard, but a reference has been made, is to make sure that the controls that you have implemented are consistent with the state of the art. If you do that, you demonstrate that your controls reflect what's collectively and generally known and are consistent with what the current expectations are. As a result, you can conclude that your risks have been reduced to as far as possible. Second, realize that the state of the art evolves over time. What's state of the art today will not be state of the art 10 years from now. And what state of the art was 10 years ago probably is not state of the art today. As a result, there's a requirement in the 2019 version of ISO 14971 to continually monitor the state of the art as part of your production and post-production activities. If there's a change in the state of the art, you have to look at the benefit-risk balance of your current devices. For example, if you have a device in the market that was built based on the state of the art 20 years ago, it may not reflect the current level of expectation required by the regulatory bodies. Remember, there is a reason why there's a C in GMP. It's current GMP. It evolves over time. So make sure that you're following up on that and reviewing the benefit-risk balance of your devices in the context of the state of the art. So in conclusion, state of the art is an important concept and a requirement for your risk management system and the overall quality management process. Three key points to remember. State of the art reflects what's generally known at the current time. It evolves over time, it doesn't remain static. And it is codified in the form of standards, guidelines, regulations, and other scientific clinical literature. So you have to keep track of all of that to make sure your current devices are consistent with what is state of the art. Thank you for your interest and attention. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. You can also visit my website www.exceedqm.com to learn more about this topic. I have an article on my blog that goes into a lot more detail and offers a lot more guidance on this topic. You can also subscribe to my newsletter. It goes out every month takes only 15 minutes to stay current with whatever is going on in our, in our industry, regulatory compliance, and it offers my insights based on years of experience. It's absolutely free.